Morning, Botai. Ayrev Shabbat Shalom, and Tiskul Shem and Abot Vitovot. Just a few important uh, halachot for Ayrev Sukkot, especially today. Um, like I do every year, Ayrev Sukkot, I try to speak about the way to tie the lulav according to Minhagas Faradim Ve'adot Mizrach. So, first of all, what you do is you prepare the three minim, one lulav, three hadasim Meshulashim, and two aravot. Some people take many hadasim, it's mutar, but according to Marana Shulchanur and Siman Tafresh Nun Alef, no more than three hadasim avot, three hadasim shulashim should be taken. That's what he says. That's for the midakdekim, those who are scrupulous with mitzvah observance. You take the lulav with the spine facing up. The spine is the dark green line that goes up the middle of the lulav. You put it on the table with the spine facing up. Then what you do is you measure the hadasim and the aravot. Usually the way they're marketed is that the aravot will be significantly higher than the hadasim. Therefore, you have to snip the aravot a little bit from the bottom so that the hadasim will, st- will, will be a little bit higher than them. The Kafahaim quotes the Ariya Kadosh and Sha'ara Kavanot that says that if a person's aravot are higher than his hadasim, he is bisakana. It, it's not a good thing. So a person should snip the aravot from the bottom for the hadasim to stick out even a drop over the, hadasim, uh, over the aravot. You take the two aravot and you put one arava on each side, one to the right of the spine and one to the left. Then you take the three hadasim, you put one hadas on top of the right arava, one hadas on top of the left arava, and one hadas along the middle, along the spine itself. In order to make it beautiful, you should try to make sure that all of the bottoms are equal. The bottom of the lulav, the bottoms of the hadasim, and the aravot are all equal. Then, once everything's in position, you begin tying. Now, what do you do? How do you tie? According to Minagas Faradim, we don't use rings. Marana Shulchanum says in Siman Tafresh Nun Aleph that you take lulav strings, uh, lulav strands, you can take a leaf from the lulav itself, split it up into strands, they're very pliable, put it up into strands, stick it under, and make a double knot. You go around once, and then twice, you make a tight double knot, snip the edges, make a few of those, it doesn't matter how many, even one a person is Yotze, the mitzvah of tying the lulav, but some people do more, however, however many you like is permissible. And once you've done that, you are uh, Yotzeh the Mitzvah. You also have to be careful that the Hadassim and the Aravot end low enough on the Lulav that at least one tefach or about three inches of the spine sticks out above the Hadassim and Aravot. Like we said, if you start the Hadassim and Aravot from the bottom of the Lulav, if everything's equal in the bottom, you'll have plenty of that. Some people start higher up and they don't have a tefach, they don't have three inches left of the shidra, of the spine sticking up over the Adasim Aravot. Those people are not yotze the mitzvah. They're not yotze. Um, the Chachamim said there has to be a tefach. So that is with regards to tying the lulav. Obviously, tomorrow the lulav is mukze, mar Shabbat. We don't take the lulav, we'll take it for the first time on Sunday morning and we'll also make a birkat. Shechianu, when we take it for the first time on second day of Yom Tov, Sunday morning. Now, that's with regards to tying the lulav. This evening is the first night of Sukkot. Uh, we pray to HaKadosh Baruch Hu that the rain stops, so we have the zechut to sit and be mekayim the mitzvah ta'asim in the Torah of eating bread in the sukkah on the first night of Sukkot. So we hope and pray that that happens. We have to be prepared if a Kadosh Baruch Hu doesn't want to give us that zechut to know what to do. According to Minhag Asfaradim, the Ramban, uh, the Rambam, Rashba, Marana Shulchan Aruch, there's no difference between the first night and any other night of Sukkot. The halacha is that if it's raining that hard, as it is right now outside, that the food would get, you know, would get messed up as a result of the rain, that's called mitzta'ir, that's called a person is uncomfortable, in the sukkah, and a person is patur mi sukkah. A person is exempt from the mitzvah of sukkah, even on the first night. Not only that, Maran Zechon Barachan Chazon Vadiyah quotes the Moruk Tzi'ah, Agon Yabetz, who says that according to these shitot, which the halacha follows, you should not be waiting for the rain to clear up. If it's raining when you come home from shul, and you're ready to make kiddush and start the seuda, you start. It's not kvod yom tov to wait and wait. There are certain poskim who say that. We do not hold like that. You start the seuda at home and you go. If after the seuda you see that it clears up and now it's, you know, it's a, your person's able to sit in the sukkah comfortably, then he can go out, he can do netilat yadayim again and eat a kazait 
of bread in the sukkah and make lishiv basukkah to be yotze the mitzvah. But again, you should not be waiting tonight if it happens to be raining so hard like it is now. That's with regards to that. So everybody should, we already, uh, unfortunately, not unfortunately, the Chachamim said we don't have the mitzvah deoraita the of lulav on the first day of Sukkot this year. So at least we should be able to have the mitzvah of Sukkah. If a person really prays from the depths of his heart, all of the forecasts and meteorologists, all of them are batelum vutal. Kadosh Baruch Hu controls the, the world and the weather. So you need to pray very hard, huh? Yeah. The meteorologists don't, don't control anything. Kadosh Baruch Hu is greater than all of them put together. So just pray that we have the mitzvah. And Bezat Hashem, we will. I want to wish you all a Shabbat Shalom. And Tizkur L'Shanim Rabot Na'imot V'Tovot. Chag Sameach to all.